In this video, we are going to learn about motion in space using vector functions. So that's going to be velocity, acceleration, and speed. And in three space, we're going to add to acceleration by defining a tangential and normal component of the acceleration vector. That's a little bit different than the linear motion we studied in single variable calculus, since all the motion was just on a line. Before we get there, let's start with the basics. Given a vector function r of t that represents the position of the object in space, then the velocity vector v of t is equal to the first derivative, r prime of t. So that will give us a velocity vector function. Speed will be the magnitude of the velocity vector function. And acceleration, a of t, will be the second derivative, r double prime of t, or we can define that as the first derivative of velocity. All right, so we have velocity vector function, speed, and acceleration. Our first example, find the velocity vector of a particle with acceleration given by a of t being t e to the t2 if v of 0 equals 3k. So here, we're going to need to integrate to go from acceleration back to velocity. So velocity vector function, we're going to find by integrating our acceleration. So that's going to be the integral of a vector function, t e to the t2 dt. So velocity equals the integral of t will be 1 half t squared plus a constant. Integral of e to the t will be e to the t plus c2. Integral of 2 will be 2t plus some constant. And then to find the constant values, we'll use the initial value that was given to us. So we'll evaluate the velocity function at 0. So we get c1, 1 plus c2, c3. So that needs to be equal to 3k, which in vector brackets will be 0, 0, 3. So we get c1 equals 0, 1 plus c2 equals 0, so c2 equals negative 1, and c3 equals 3. So putting those constants into our velocity vector function, v of t then will be defined as 1 half t squared e to the t minus 1 and 2t plus 3. And they could always extend this problem. They could have given us an initial position as well. And in that case, we'd have to integrate our velocity vector function to find the position vector function and use the initial value that they give us to find the constants we get if we integrate the three components of our velocity vector function. Next, given r of t equaling to 2t t squared, sketch the path of the particle. So this is back to the first video on vector functions. So we can make a table. So t, x, y. So we'll go from negative 3 to 3. And if we need to add more points, we can always do that. So negative 3, the vector would be negative 6, 9. And we'll have negative 4, 4, negative 2, 1. 0, 0, 2, 1, 4, 4, 6, 9. So remember, these are all vector outputs, but we'll plot them as points, the terminal point of each vector. So we'll start at the origin, so 0, 0, 2, 1, 4, 4, 6, 9, negative 2, 1, negative 4, 4, negative 6, 9, Okay, so the curve is going to be parabolic. So there we have our space curve. I drew it in two different parts. We have to indicate the direction of increasing t. So that's going to move from left to right along the space curve. And there we have the plot of our position function. Next up, find the velocity, acceleration, and speed of the particle at t equals 2. So we need to differentiate. So the velocity vector will be 2, 2t. And acceleration 
will be 0, 2. So just quickly pointing out, the acceleration vector will always be 0, 2 for any t value, right? because there is no value of t in the acceleration vector function. Any point, that will be our acceleration vector for this example. So now they'd like us to evaluate it at t equals 2. So the velocity vector at 2 will be 2, 4. Acceleration vector at 2, as we just spoke about, will be 0, 2. And then speed will be the magnitude of the velocity vector at 2. So the square root of 2 squared plus 4 squared. So square root of 4 plus 16. Square root of 20, which simplified would be 2 square root of 5. And the advantage of simplifying the square root in this case is if we were to use this value, which we will later, uh, in a computation, the more simplified version may give us a more simplified answer. So then part C asks us to draw the velocity and acceleration vectors at t equals 2. So we're going to go back to the graph of our position function, and we'll add in our velocity and acceleration. So the point that we are defining this all at is here at 2. So our velocity vector will be 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. So there's our velocity vector at 2, which is tangential, right? So we see that it is tangential to the curve. And then our acceleration vector is 0, 2. So there is a of 2. So notice the acceleration vector here points inwards. And the reason that's important to pick up on is the next part of the video, we're going to discuss rewriting the acceleration vector as a tangential component and a normal component. So basically taking this vector and writing it as the sum of two separate vectors, one that's tangential, so in the direction of velocity, and one that would be normal to the direction of travel or to the velocity vector. So let's define that. Often we look to express acceleration as the sum of two components, one in the direction of the tangent vector and the other in the direction of the normal vector. Now, we have done this before. If you recall back to our video on projections, one of the things we did was rewrite a vector as the sum of a projection vector plus an orthogonal vector, which is essentially the same thing we are doing here. We're writing acceleration now as the sum of a projection vector, which will be tangent or in the direction of the tangent vector plus a vector that's orthogonal which is the normal vector in order to do that we'll use the unit tangent and the unit normal since unit means magnitude of one these vectors will only contribute direction so if we remember the unit tangent vector is defined as r prime of t over the magnitude of r prime of t which is a great definition but translating this definition into uh, velocity acceleration, since that's the focus of this video, this would be the velocity over the magnitude of the velocity. Unit normal, we have not defined yet. So defining the unit normal is going to be the derivative of the unit tangent, so t prime of t, over the magnitude of the unit tangent, it's derivative, so magnitude of t prime of t. We're going to leave it at that. Uh, there will be courses that dive a little bit deeper into the unit normal, and extension of that is something called the unit binormal. Uh, we're just going to use unit tangent and unit normal as vectors to help us define the acceleration vector as a sum of two components. Uh, and we're not going to compute the unit normal nor the unit binormal in this course. So our acceleration vector, defining it as the sum of two components, looks like this. Now, where this came from, the derivation is quite interesting, but I would leave it to you on your own to look up that derivation. For our purposes, I want us to understand that the tangential component, the scalar, right, the scalar that we're going to scale the unit tangent by, will be the derivative of the magnitude of velocity, or the derivative of speed, 
and then the scalar value we're going to multiply the unit normal by will be curvature times the magnitude of velocity squared. Really, it's the second part uh, why I include this definition, because I like showing that curvature is used to define the acceleration vector. So there is a connection between the curvature, which we just finished with, and acceleration in 3 space. Notationally, we're going to call the scalar value of the unit tangent a sub t and the scalar value of the unit normal a sub n. Now, this formula is great. We know how to find speed. We know how to find a derivative. We know how to find curvature. But in practical terms, this is less than desirable. Finding the curvature every time we want to write the acceleration vector as the sum of two vectors would be quite tedious. So in the bottom part of this page, we want to work to find a better formula for both the tangential component and the normal component of acceleration. So in order to do that, let's first draw a picture. So let's say we have a curve like this, and the direction of travel goes that way. And we'll take a point, so let's say there's our point. So we'd have a velocity vector, and we'd have an acceleration vector. So we want to be able to define the acceleration vector as the sum of two vectors. So one in the direction of the unit tangent. So unit tangent goes in the direction of the velocity vector, but its magnitude is 1. And then the unit normal is orthogonal to the unit tangent. So there, and its magnitude is also 1. So we want some scalar of t plus some scalar of n to make up the acceleration vector. So how are we going to do that without these formulas up here? So let's rely on concepts we've covered so far that we've put into use. So for me, the tangential component of acceleration can be found by projecting the acceleration vector onto the unit tangent vector and finding that scalar value. Right. So if I do this out, right? so essentially we're trying to find, so this would be a sub t. So that's the scalar we're looking for. Okay, how long is the projection of the acceleration vector onto the unit tangent vector? And then here, that's the scalar we're looking for to scale the unit normal by. Okay, let's focus on tangential first. So project acceleration onto the unit tangent. So scalar projection is the component of acceleration onto unit tangent. Now that's easy enough to compute, right? We could say that that's a dot t over magnitude of t, which that magnitude is just 1, so really it's just a dotted with t. That's really convenient if we have the unit tangent vector, but most of the time we would have to find the unit tangent vector. And the whole purpose of the formulas we're trying to figure out is can we use what we have? Typically what we have is position, velocity, acceleration. Well, the unit tangent vector we redefined in terms of velocity. So we can say that a dotted with t is really just a dotted with velocity over the magnitude of velocity. So formally writing out a formula, so tangential component of acceleration. I'm going to switch the order of the dot product just so v comes first. Remember, uh, it can commute. So v dotted with a over the magnitude of v. That's going to be much easier for us to compute. Since we have velocity acceleration, we can find the speed or the magnitude of velocity quite easily. Now for the normal component of acceleration, let's use this, which is curvature times the magnitude of velocity squared. Curvature, we have a formula that we've been using already. So that was r prime crossed r double prime, the magnitude of that vector, over the magnitude of r prime cubed. Now, instead of writing r primes and r double primes, let's translate that into velocity and acceleration. So the curvature would look like this. It would be the magnitude of velocity crossed with acceleration over the magnitude of velocity cubed times the magnitude of velocity squared 
which will simplify nicely velocity, magnitude of velocity squared with the cube leaves us with a factor of one. So that means that the normal component of acceleration can be defined as the magnitude of the cross product between velocity and acceleration over the magnitude of velocity. Now, it may not jump out to you right away, but for me, this stands out as a computation that we've done before. If we created a parallelogram with the velocity and the acceleration vectors, and we were looking, if you remember, the distance from a point to a line was where this came up, we found the area of the parallelogram, that's the magnitude of the cross product of velocity and acceleration, and then area of a parallelogram is base, which in this case is the magnitude of velocity times the height, height is that scalar value we're looking for. So divide the area by the base, we got the height, which is the length of the uh, normal component of acceleration. So both of these computations we have done before in different uh, areas, and now we're bringing both of them to compute the tangential and normal components of acceleration. Okay, so that was a lot of derivation. Now let's apply them to two examples. So find the tangential and normal components of acceleration of r of t equaling to 2t t squared at t equals 2. So this is the same vector function as before so that we can just jump right in. So the velocity vector at 2 was 2, 4. The acceleration vector at 2 was 0, 2. The magnitude of the velocity vector was 2 square root of 5. Okay, so we have our vectors. The nice part about being asked at t equals 2 is once we're done differentiating, the rest of the computation is not calculus. Finding a dot product or a cross product or a magnitude is not a calculus operation. So once we differentiate, we can then plug in that t value and do all the computations with numbers as opposed to expressions with t in them. So the tangential component of acceleration then is the dot product of velocity and acceleration over the magnitude of velocity. So that's going to be 0 plus 8 over 2 square root of 5. So 8 over 2 square root of 5, 4 over square root of 5. And then the normal component of acceleration magnitude of the cross product of velocity and acceleration over the magnitude of velocity. So we need to cross velocity and acceleration. Now remember, cross product is only defined in three space, and both the velocity and acceleration vector right now are in two. So the easy fix there is to add a k component of zero for both vectors. That will allow us to compute the cross product between the velocity and acceleration, so 2, 4, 0, 0, 2, 0. It also makes finding the cross product a little bit nicer. So the i component will be 0 minus 0, which is 0. j component, 0 minus 0 is 0. k component is 4 minus 0 is 4. So then the magnitude of the cross product vector would be the square root of 0 squared plus 0 squared plus 4 squared, so that's just going to be 4. So the normal component of acceleration is going to be 4 over 2 square root of 5, so 2 over square root of 5. Now what these scalar values allow us to do, just to complete the problem, is to say the acceleration vector is 4 over square root of 5 times the unit tangent vector plus 2 over the square root of 5 times the unit normal vector. So we've expressed acceleration now as the sum of two vectors, one that is tangential and one that is normal. And if we wanted actual vectors in the sum, then we would have to find the unit tangent and the unit normal vector, which we can do. But for our purposes, we will stop at that point, right? just showing that acceleration can be written as the sum of two vectors, a tangential and a normal vector. Our last example, Given r of t equaling to cos t sine t t squared, find the tangential and normal components of acceleration in terms of t. So the challenge in this example is they don't give us a value of t, so we're going to have a more algebraic computation here. 
So let's start. Velocity is going to be negative sine of t cosine of t 2t. Acceleration is going to be negative sine of t, negative cosine of t rather. That would have been a bad mistake. Negative sine of t and 2, since we wouldn't get simplifications that were supposed to happen. We need the magnitude of velocity or the speed, so that's going to be the square root of negative sine t squared plus cosine t squared plus 2t squared. So saving a little rewriting out, we're going to have the Pythagorean identity in those first two terms, so that's going to be 1. So the square root of 1 plus 4t squared, magnitude of velocity. All right, so we have all of the elements. Now we have to go through the computation. So the tangential component of acceleration, we're going to dot velocity and acceleration. So that's going to be sine t cos t minus sine t cos t plus 4t over the magnitude of velocity which is the square root of 1 plus 4t squared. So the sine t cos t minus sine t cos t leaves us with 4t over square root of 1 plus 4t squared. So what this gives us is a function in terms of t that we can now use to find the tangential component of acceleration at any point along the curve. Right? So there is benefits to finding this because now any point, we can find the tangential component quite easily. Now for the normal component, we need to do a cross product. So we need to cross V with A. So I, J, and K. So we have negative sine of T cosine of T 2T, negative cosine T, negative sine T 2. Let's just make sure everything looks good. So now the cross product vector, so we're going to get 2 cosine t plus 2t sine t. And then the j component will be negative, so that's going to be negative 2 sine t plus 2t cosine t. And then we're going to get sine squared t plus cos squared t which again, Pythagorean identity, this is going to be equal to 1. Now, I am aware that we have to find the magnitude of this vector, which is not going to be the nicest computation that we have seen, but I think it's important that we're able to do that. So we need to find the magnitude of that cross product. So that's going to be the square root of 2 cosine t plus 2t sine t squared plus 2 sine t minus 2t cos t squared plus 1 squared. So if we expand out, we have 4 cosine squared t plus 8t sine t cos t plus 4t squared sine squared t plus 4 sine squared t minus 8t sine t cos t plus 4t squared cos squared t plus 1. Extend that a little bit there. All right. Is this the most desirable computation? No. Do things work out nicely? I think so. 8t sine t cos t minus 8t sine t cos t. 4 cos squared plus 4 sine squared, Pythagorean identity, so that's just going to be 4. Then we have 4t squared sine squared t plus 4t squared cos squared t, another Pythagorean identity, so that's plus 4t squared plus 1. So we get the square root of 5 plus 4t squared. So it was a lot of work to get to this point, but that's actually a pretty nice magnitude.
So we can go back up here. So the normal component of acceleration will be the square root of 5 plus 4t squared over the square root of 1 plus 4t squared. And again, this gives us a function in terms of t that we can use to compute the normal component of acceleration at any point. So for me, the new part of the video talking about the tangential and normal components of acceleration is the part that we're going to have to spend some time on, right? There was no analogous piece in single variable calculus to this. It only emerges once we start defining our motion with a vector function and define it in either two or three space. So practice with this, get comfortable with the tangential and normal component. Like I tried to do, I connected it to computations and formulas that we've used previously so that we're using the same tools now using them for a different application. All right, see you in the next video.